to you have a late lunch. It uh, getting close to evening here on Sunday, May 3rd. We are getting ready for our first full week here back at Advanced. And um, I announced yesterday that we are starting uh, for our staff and for patients to provide the COVID-19 antibody test. And it dawned on me as I've been speaking with patients and family <clears throat> over the weekend that, um, first of all, what's the difference between the COVID, the viral test, the nasal swab, and the serum or the antibody test. Um, so the viral test is the nasal swab where viral particles actually measuring for the load, the viral load, whether or not you've got an active infection or at least you've, you, you have something in your nasal mucosa. The antibody test is something that suggests that you were either exposed or not exposed based on our immune system's response. And I think probably listening to some of the, the hearings and the reports over the past 40-something you know, days, we're probably all aware of that. But I wanted to go through, I found this animation, and um, <clears throat> this, it says sample on it because, um, because it is, in fact, uh, nothing that I own. But I did find it from this great company, this Nucleus company. And I'm, I'm just going to play it through more uh, as a matter to review with you exactly what happens with the immune system. And so the animation starts off, you can see that we've got red and white blood cells flowing through our <clears throat> bloodstream. And then what you're going to see here in a moment is that a pathogen, and that can be bacterial or viral, will invade us. And in this case, it's a virus. COVID is a virus, as you know. And so then what happens is it moves towards its destination, and this is usually the surface of the cell, and these tubular extensions then from the pathogen end up binding to surface proteins which are on our cells. And in this case, it's a white blood cell, uh, what we call a leukocyte, and um, it can be <clears throat> along the nasal mucosa commonly in the respiratory apparatus for, for COVID. As the animation continues, then you see more and more of these pathogens, these viruses continuing to attach to the white blood cell, rendering it ineffective, right? And so this is a problem. Then we can't uh, fight it off. But during the response, these Y-shaped antibodies then begin to attack the pathogen, the virus, so that it blocks the binding, and therefore the pathogen can't any longer anchor to that blood uh, cell. And this is through a complex uh, immunity. What you'll see here then is the macrophage, the kind of, kind of the Pac-Man for anybody old enough to understand that. Then we'll go ahead and digest or ingest that pathogen. So it gives you an idea of what's going on um, with regards to the, um, the immune system. It's very complex. That's the most simplified animation that I could find. But the reason why I wanted to show it is so visually you had an idea of what was going on. Well, the antibody test that we test, that, that this test for, is IgM and IgG. And real simply, when we have a pathogen and we're developing immunity to it, that is antibodies, the first antibodies that we'll see are uh, what we call IgM. And so, uh, and then later, we'll develop IgG. So with these two antibodies, we also get a sense for the time frame. You know, if we're infected and three days later we're tested, we may see some IgM, a higher proportion, a higher ratio, because there isn't any IgG yet. As time goes on, there's a blend, there's still some IgM and IgG, and later on we might see IgG. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion about the protective uh, immune, what does it mean if you've been infected and you have antibodies? How long are we immune? I don't have the answer for that. I don't think we do with uh, COVID at this at this point, but uh, but we do know that uh, you know back in December, January here, there was something going on in our office. Uh, we didn't know about uh, COVID nineteen coronavirus at that time, at least publicly, and uh, there was just something strange. There were a lot of our uh, staff and um, uh, maybe some patients, but our staff, they were really, uh, something going on. Some of them tested negative for influenza, but were coughing and just not doing well. So I suspect, I'm hopeful actually, that many of us were exposed, infected, and, and maybe didn't show signs. I didn't show any signs. Uh, Karen Whitney, who's on our Let's Have Lunch often, didn't show any signs, but most of our other staff had something going on. Um, so we'll, we'll find out. As a reminder, the test that we're providing is cleared through the emergency use authorization by, by the FDA. And so 
Um, it's not FDA uh, approved, but it is one of these emergency tests, one of a few, a handful actually, that are approved for, for its usage. In fact, the specificity is over 97%, the sensitivity is over 90%, and the overall accuracy is over 95% for this particular test. In a moment, I'm going to show you about a three-minute video. This is from the lab itself, so you understand uh, exactly what's going on <clears throat> and, and how it works. Um, real simply, you'll come in and we'll, we'll do the appropriate paperwork. We'll stick you, take a little pipette, you'll see in a moment, a little blood sample. And within about eight minutes, we'll, we'll have a, uh, the test results for you. Um, this is something currently that uh, we are providing. Uh, the cost is $135. Uh, we're not billing insurance. Um, there is some other information uh, out there regarding the test, but I wanted to put this out because they're already, we've gotten a lot of inquiries and a lot of demand for it. So we want to be able to help you as an individual, help you as a family if you're just curious. Uh, I also think there's great value for us as we're all trying to get back over the next month. I realize that there are some sectors that aren't officially opened yet, but, um, but it might give you as a business owner or as a coworker, a team, a little bit better understanding as to how many of your team members might, be, might have already been exposed so we don't have to worry as much, at least right now, about them. Um, so let me do this. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, run this short little clip here. Um, just so, excuse me, just so we can go ahead and um, give you an idea of what's going on. I'll be back in just a second. Ray Biotech's COVID-19 rapid tests enable the qualitative detection of IgM and IgG antibodies to the SARS-CoV-2 viral N protein in human serum, whole blood, and finger prick samples in less than 10 minutes. Each rapid test kit will arrive in a box containing the materials to perform 20 individual tests. This includes one instruction manual, 20 detection cassettes, 20 plastic pipettes, and 20 vials of sample diluent. Both the detection cassettes and pipettes may be inside the foil packet. The Lancet set for finger prick samples can be purchased separately and includes 20 Lancets, 20 alcohol swabs, and 20 adhesive bandages. To perform a test, first open a foil packet containing the detection cassette. Set aside one detection cassette, one plastic pipette, and one vial of sample diluent. For finger pricks, you will also need one lancet, one alcohol swab, and one adhesive bandage. Next, to dislodge any sample diluent that may be in the cap, tap the vial on a hard surface and set it to the side. For finger prick samples, massaging your finger may help improve blood flow to the fingertip. Disinfect the finger with the alcohol swab and let it air dry for 10 seconds. Then use the lancet to draw blood from the finger and disinfect the finger with the alcohol swab again. Once a good drop of blood has formed on the finger, use the plastic pipette to fill the narrow part of the pipette with blood. Try to avoid forming bubbles to ensure that the amount of blood collected is correct. Serum can also be used during this step. Immediately place the blood into the vial of sample diluent. Squeeze the pipette bulb three to five times to mix well. Add two to three drops of the diluted blood to the detection cassette. Finally, apply an adhesive bandage to the finger. This is a time course video taken of two tests run side by side using finger prick samples. On the left is a sample from a COVID-19 negative patient. On the right is a sample from a COVID-19 positive patient. The control line at the top of the cassette should appear. This line is for quality control and ensures that the assay is working properly. Red blood cells will migrate across the device slowly. Read the results before the red blood cell front reaches the test line. Results read after 20 minutes are not accurate. A band at the test line indicates that antibodies have been produced in response to COVID-19 infection. The band intensity may range from faint pink to dark pink. For more information, please contact Ray Biotech.
Okay, so I hope that was um, somewhat helpful. Um, let me just close this In down here video, so I don't let's uh, talk get about any more where is volume. Anyway, um, so I hope uh, I hope that makes a little bit of sense. So that's what you should expect. It's a little finger prick. Um, I think really what's important to understand is is the test that we're offering at this time. Um, a little bit about the immune system and what we're looking for with IgM and IgG. Um, you know, I must say that uh, somebody, I just want to go back in my background a little bit. I uh, studied uh, molecular biology and biochemistry for a long time at Syracuse University and did the academic research track and did a lot of work with human retroviruses. So this is another virus. Um, it's, it's important to understand what we do with the information. And so one of the things that's a little bit troubling for me is the amount of fear that is out there. Now, I'm a physician. We take care of patients. I want everybody to be healthy. I don't want anybody to die. I don't want anybody to be sick. Um, I personally don't understand uh, if you're going for a jog, the necessity to wear a mask if you're outside like that. And I have no problems with uh, anybody doing that. Um, I believe that over the past six weeks, the highest risks that we probably all had were the few establishments that were open, like the grocery store here in Cincinnati, Kroger, wherever you go. And, um, and I know some of those uh, uh, grocery stores have mandated wearing masks. Um, but more importantly with testing, um, tests do have false negatives and false positives. This antibody test, is pretty accurate, so we feel quite confident in, in the results. That being said, there is a percentage of error that can occur. And, uh, and this is true of the COVID viral test as well. Um, but we want to be careful with information that we have. Um, and I'm going to go back to the HIV AIDS days. I recognize this as a respiratory virus and it's transmitted differently, but I would like to say a few things. So back in the day, let's say you engaged in what you considered risky behavior whether or not you had you know, anal sex or whether or not you were doing IV drugs or whatever it was to blood, to blood transmission of uh, HIV at the time. Well, you could theoretically be infected. So I, I engaged in that behavior last night or when, a recent time, let's say, and I want to go be tested. Well, that test is likely to become negative for some of the reasons that I was just demonstrating to you is the antibody test, our antibodies don't uh, aren't a certain level for a period of time, and there are errors in the tests. And so I might be then running around thinking that I can't transmit this disease, in this case coronavirus, because of because of the false test. And so that's just not true. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is, as we all get back to uh, the world, um, whether or not it was a month ago, whether or not it was today, tomorrow, whether or not it's June 1st or August 15th, we're going to be moving into another flu season, right, by the time the fall comes along. And I think our behaviors in terms of social distancing and washing our hands and wearing masks and doing things that are just common sense are going to go a lot further than the fear that I, 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 believe, uh, I believe initially was reasonable. We didn't know enough about it, but we do know now. We have information about the populations that are uh, at highest risk with comorbidities or age or immunosuppression. Um, and we have an idea of uh, how we can test. The testing is improved and uh, obviously who, who may have been exposed as well. So anyway, I'm just giving you my two cents. I know it's just my personal opinion, but, um, but we look forward to seeing you guys back. We are taking the proper precautions. Uh, we have what you need. Doors are open, masks are around, uh, sanitizer is around. If you wanna wait in your car, you can wait in your car. In terms of the surgeries that we'll be doing, we're only gonna have the surgical patient come back. We won't have, we won't have the significant others at that point come back, even though You've been, you've been together anyway. It's more for protection of our team. For patients undergoing uh, anesthesia, and that's uh, unusual for uh, my patients, rhinoplasties are the main patients where we use IV sedation. For those individuals, um, and we may extend this to all of our surgery patients for a time being, is we are going to uh, write a prescription so that you can be tested for the COVID test 72 hours before 
and then we're asking our patients to remain in isolation or quarantine for the two to three day period. It can be 72 hours before, 48 hours before, just sometimes not sooner than 72 hours before um, <clears throat> and, and remain in quarantine so that we protect the safety of um, all of our team and, uh, and obviously we, we don't want you, to, we don't wanna be operating on you uh, because potentially if you were infected, you could have a poor outcome from, from surgery. Barring those things though, I think, um, I think, well, I don't think, we're ready to go. We are a fully accredited surgery center. We take precautions anyway, um, and we are super excited to be getting back. Uh, based on our schedule, uh, I think you're super excited that we are back, um, and, um, and so we'll take care of each other. But, um, but I wanted to give you a little update on, uh, I guess, my two cents, and also a little bit about the test that we are offering. And we're, we're starting to offer that beginning uh, Tuesday. Thanks a lot. Have a good evening. See you all tomorrow. Bye.